I'm Mike from Hackaday, and this is One Pixel Pac-Man. With over 400 pixels per inch in most cell phones, the cool thing is less pixels, not more. So I decided to build One Pixel Pac-Man, where the player is just one pixel. The hardware I'm using is a 32x32 RGB LED matrix, which is driven by a TNT 3.1. The sound effects that you've been hearing unfortunately aren't coming from the game, but it's just because I haven't had time to implement them yet. The TNT 3.1 actually has one pin that has a digital to analog converter, so it's entirely possible to generate these types of sounds from this hardware. This is actually a commodity panel that is made for things like LED billboards. I really like this because they're mostly black. If you look at NeoPixels, they're mostly white, so when a pixel is off, you can still see where it's supposed to be. With this, when a pixel is off, the black kind of takes over and you lose sight of where it should be. The Smart Matrix plugs into the connector on the back of the module and has solder points for a TNC 3.1 to drive the display. I've seen these used mostly for showing animations and that sort of thing, and they do an amazing job of that, but I wanted to make something that was interactive, and so I decided to add a joystick. In this case, I'm using the Atari 2600 joystick, and it turns out that the connector for that is simply a DB9 connector. The back of the Teensy has pads for extra pin breakout, so I soldered ribbon cable to that and soldered the DB9 connector to the other end. The Smart Matrix kit also comes with a diffuser, which does a really good job of blending together the colors for each pixel and kind of defining the colors. I really like it in this case. The kit is meant for you to find a shadow box frame, like from your local craft store, in order to put it in. And I haven't done that yet. I'm kind of thinking of what might be an alternative way to show this. It has really nice mounting areas on the back. Uh, it also comes with a power supply that can put out, I think it's between 4 and 5 amps that the display needs when it's full white. In this case, I've actually hacked in USB because I'm never drawing above... 2 amps, and USB can generally put out about 2.1 amps. A big part of the brilliance of the Smart Matrix is the library that Lewis wrote to go along with it. It actually uses DMA, the direct memory access, on the Freescale chip that's on the TNT 3.1, and what this means is in order to drive the display itself, you're using almost no CPU power at all. The library itself uses a double frame buffer, so you can write into one and then give it a command to switch to the other one. In addition to that, there's a very clever text overlay feature that allows you to scroll text across the top of whatever's already in your frame buffers without messing with them. So that's really it. A great classic game played on kind of a clever display. I gotta say, it was a ton of fun working on this. If you've never looked into the AI for the Ghost in Pac-Man before, it's really clever and quite brilliant. I encourage you to go Google Pac-Man dossier and take a look at the great things that people have put together that explain how the game works. It's really brilliant what the original developer named Toru Iwatani did to make the ghosts feel like they were actually reacting to you. But when you see the rules, you'll realize it's really just a simple set of tricks. It kind of ruins the magic for you, but I appreciate kind of the cunning and, and the clever that went into developing that, and I don't mind for the magic to be lost. You can learn how to recreate One Pixel Pac-Man by going to hackaday.io, and if you do, we want to hear about it. Send us a line at hackaday.com forward slash submit.